Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about how we can configure the pile head fixity in a pile cap using S foundation. In this example, I have four identical foundations. They each have four piles. They are square pads with pedestals on top. And these pedestals are all loaded with equivalent loads of 50 kilonewtons in the lateral direction and 500 kilonewtons in compression in the axial direction. And I want to compare different pile head fixities to observe the differences in results. The easiest way to modify these settings is to go to the define menu. Under the define menu, I can go to pads pile caps. And from here, you can see that I have four different instances of the identical pad or pile cap. In this case here, I've done this just to allow me to modify each one individually. We could also group them to do more of a mass editing application, but that wasn't my intention for this example. So here I can go to the pile cap tab. And if I select the first one, which happens to be the pad on the farthest left, I can see here that we've got all of our piles listed. If we had different soil profiles, it would be listed individually there. And here I can control the connection between the pile head and the pad and the pile tip and the soil beneath it. I'm going to focus in on the pile head for now. And we're going to focus this example for the first one, uh, first pile cap, we're going to assume that this is pinned. And this means essentially that the joints that connect the pile to the pad are released in moment. Uh, so they're not going to transfer any moment and they will allow for independent rotation between the pad and the pile cap. I'm going to now switch to the second uh, pile cap that I've defined. And currently it's set up with the default pinned uh, head connection. But if I change this, I want to switch to fixed. And as you can probably guess from the name, the fixed pile uh, head connection will assume that there is a moment transfer between the pile itself and the pile cap above. So the rotation will transfer between the pile cap and the actual pile. So we've got this one set up now. I'm going to move down the list to number three. Again, they're starting with the default, but this time I'll just select the top of the, the column header and switch to elastically restrained. And let me just expand this window here so I can see a little bit more clearly what we're working with. So with the elastically restrained option, we have the ability here to define uh, a stiffness of that spring that's somewhere between fully fixed and fully pinned. I've chosen this spring stiffness of 4,000 kilonewton meters per radian. It doesn't necessarily reflect any realistic uh, testing, just something in between so we can observe the difference in results. And finally, I'll move down to number four here. And for the pile head uh, fixity that I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with the rotationally fixed option. And this basically just fix, uh, fixes the joint uh, rotation ability so that at the connection between the pile cap and the pile itself, we're not going to allow for any rotation of that joint and it's just going to basically keep that entire pad level as it deflects. So there may be reasons why you might choose one or the other. They're not saying, or we're not saying in this example to always choose one. Uh, you may have to choose one to reflect the real world conditions that you're faced with. We just want to go over the different options. So once I'm done defining all these, I can click the OK button to apply these changes and close the dialog. And just to explain here again a little bit more clearly what uh, this is affecting, if we go to the finite element view, and I'm just going to change to the orthogonal projection. I find it a little bit easier to view things on a angle like this. The piles are represented by these members that are connecting to the shell element mesh that represents our pads. And we're basically just adjusting the connection between the shell element mesh and the pile itself, the members that represent that pile. So let's go ahead and run our analysis. And we're running a nonlinear static analysis for this example using the automatically generated PY, QZ, and TZ curves from this example. And you can see here, we're getting some utilization ratio. So despite having identical conditions with, except for the pile head connectivity to the uh, pile cap, 
we are getting much different utilization ratios. And that really goes to show you what influence changing this pile head uh, connection can have on the overall performance of our model. This is looking at the uh, highest utilization, which happens to be for pad structural uh, flexure. So the flexure in the pad is actually higher for the two middle pads uh, than it is for the far right or even the far left. But each one has a slightly different utilization. Now we can look at the deflected shape. And this might be interesting to us. It may be hard to really capture the, the difference in results, but we can see some subtle differences between these three here and in a very clear difference between the far one on the right. Maybe if I just animate this displacement, we are pushing down, but we're also pushing to the side. And you can see that this one on the right is effectively staying level the entire time, whereas the others are all moving over. Uh, but the connection between these uh, piles and the pile cap are different and it's leading to minor differences in the uh, deflected shape here. However, I think the differences will be easier to observe if we look at some of the force diagrams. So I can look at member results here and I can see the moments in my piles. But if I really want to study this a little bit more clearly, I personally think it's better to go to the design output window. And we have this option for pile results where I can click on the low case that I'm interested in. Uh, I just had the one low case in this example, but if I expand this, I can look at each individual footing. And remember, number one was the one with the pin support. And maybe I'll just expand this a little bit larger here. We can clearly see that the moment at the connection to the pile cap goes to zero. And we can see how that varies. We can actually look at each individual pile underneath this as well if we wanted to and see a numerical plot of that. But what I want to highlight here is that this is going to zero. For the fixed uh, head connection that's right next to that, we'll go to isolated footing two, and we can clearly see that this has a non-zero uh, moment at the tip of the pile or the top of the pile that's connected to the pile cap. So it's gonna be transferring some moments there and that might influence the overall uh, demands within that pile cap. Number three is, uh, I would say a blend of number one and two, where we're prescribing our own stiffness to transfer those forces um, between the pile cap and the, or transfer those moments between the pile cap and the pile itself. So we've entered 4,000 kilonewton meters uh, per radian. And you can see here that we do have a non-zero, in this case, negative uh, moment at the tip of our pile. And if we look at isolated footing number four, this has the elastically restrained or the rotationally fixed um, connection where that pad is staying level and we're getting a much different um, demand at the pile cap uh, connection. And we can also study this information as well by looking at the pile cap, uh, maybe from a different view. I'll look at the plan view and looking at our uh, panel contours and we might get some different looking results within those. Perhaps it's a subtle difference in some cases and in some it's more pronounced as we can see here. So depending on your applications you may want to choose one of these options uh, and if you want a little bit more control the elastically restrained option gives you the ability to control the uh, stiffness of that connection between the pile head and the pad itself.